The air hostess smiled. Welcome aboard, sir. Would you like a newspaper? Yes, please. Carl took the newspaper and looked at his ticket. I'm in seat 5F. Where's that? It's near the front of the plane, sir. On the left. There. By the window. I see. Thank you very much. Carl smiled back at the air hostess. She was young and pretty, just like my daughter, he thought. He put his bag under his seat and sat down. His friend Harold sat beside him. They watched the other passengers coming onto the plane. Harold looked at his watch. 9.30 p.m., he said. Good, we are on time, Carl agreed. And in three hours we'll be home, he said. That's good. We've been away for a long time. You'll be pleased to see your family, won't you, Harold? Harold smiled. Yes, I will. Have you seen this, sir? He opened his bag and took out two small planes. These are for my sons. I always bring something back for them. How old are your sons? Carl asked. Five and almost seven. The older one has a birthday tomorrow. He'll be very excited tonight then. Yes, I hope he gets some sleep. The plane took off. Carl watched the lights of the airport grow smaller below them. Then the plane flew above the clouds and he could see the moon and the stars in the night sky. He lay back in his seat and closed his eyes. Later, he woke up. Harold was asleep. Carl looked at his watch. It was midnight. He called the air hostess. Excuse me, what time do we arrive? 11.30 p.m. local time, sir. That's about half an hour from now. Thank you. Carl changed the time on his watch. Anything else, sir? No, I don't think so. Oh, wait a minute. Could I have a cup of coffee, please? Yes, of course, sir. He watched her bring the coffee. She walks like my daughter, too, he thought. And she's very young. She looks nervous, not sure what to do. How long have you been an air hostess? She smiled. Three months, sir. Do you like it? Yes. I love it. It's very exciting. She smiled nervously. Will that be all, sir? Yes, thank you. Have a nice flight. He drank the coffee and started to read his newspaper. When Harold woke up, Carl showed him a page in the paper. Look, there you are. He pointed to a picture. In the middle of the picture stood Carl himself, a short, thin man with gray hair wearing a suit. Behind him, on the left, was Harold, a tall, strong young man, like a sportsman. Both men were smiling. That's you and me outside the embassy, said Carl. We are in the newspaper again. You can show it to your sons. You are a famous man, Harold. Harold laughed. You are the famous man, sir, not me. I'm just a police officer. It's my job to take care of you. That's a photo of you, not me. Perhaps. But your children think that you're a famous man, I'm sure. Here, take it and show it to them. Okay, thanks. Harold smiled and put the newspaper in his coat pocket. I think I will have a cup of coffee too. He called for the air hostess, but she did not come. Harold looked surprised. What's the matter? Carl asked. The air hostess. She's sitting down talking to those two men. Carl looked up and saw the young air hostess. She was sitting in a seat at the front of the plane with the two young men. They looked worried and nervous. Suddenly, one of the young men picked up the bag and walked into pilot's cabin. The other man and the air hostess followed him. That's strange said Carl. What are they doing? I don't know. It's very strange, 
I don't like it at all. He began to get out of his seat, but then stopped and sat down again. For one or two minutes, nothing happened. None of the other passengers moved or spoke. They had seen the young man too. It became very quiet in the plane. A bell rang, and for a moment they could hear two voices arguing. Then the pilot spoke. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain speaking. Please do not be afraid. There is a change of plan. We have to land at another airport before we finish our journey. There is no danger. We will be landing in 15 minutes. Please stay in your seats and keep calm. Thank you. Then the air hostess came out of the cabin. She looked very different now, because she had a machine gun in her hand. She stood at the front of the plane and watched the passengers carefully. 